What is up guys? I have been an FL Studio user for over 10 years, but when I started out, I missed out on so many cool and powerful features in FL Studio. In this video, I'm going to show you some of my favorite FL Studio tips and tricks. Ready? Let's jump straight into the project. The splitting by channel feature. So if you're like me and want to make your tracks in one pattern. So let's say, for example, in this example, I have made the drum loop as one shots and programmed them in the piano roll. Because now I want to separate these into individual patterns, but instead of just copying, like creating a new pattern, copy this MIDI and rinse and repeat for all of these different elements, you can actually just split them up by each channel. There is a feature right here. So press the triangle button up here and navigate down to split by channel. And when we do so, it splits it up. I have all of the different patterns now. So I can actually just copy those in. So now we have full flexibility of the drum loop. And this is pretty cool. And you can do that for instruments and all that stuff. This saves so much time. And I actually found out about this for just like two years ago. So I have been doing it the wrong way, spending so much time on copying each individual element into a new pattern. So don't do that. Try this out instead duplicating your patterns and audio clips with just one shortcut. So in FL Studio, you can highlight your elements and actually just duplicate all of this highlighted elements across with just one shortcut. And this is the Control plus B and com Command and B on Mac. And if we do this, we just copy this across. And this is really, really nifty if you want to make turn your eight bar loop into a full arrangement really quickly. I love to use this approach and then I can actually just start like removing stuff for like an intro. I can maybe like highlight where I want to have the drop playing and all that stuff. So in a matter of seconds, I actually have duplicated everything across and create like a really rough sketch from my arrangement. This is really handy. linking your instruments or samples to the mixer channel. So before when I was producing, I just went to this plus in the sequencer and just added like whatever like plugin that I wanted to use. But right now I have to like go and rename this like chords and then I have to manually go and bounce it to the track, like assign it to the mixer track. And I also have to make like a new pattern and put this in like, and this is really like not so efficient if you want to do, redo this for all of the different instruments and samples that you're going to use in your project. And let's face it, it's going to be a lot when we are producing. We like to use a lot of stuff. So there is like one really cool way to avoid having to click and redo all of this stuff. So instead, you go up here to the plus icon up here to add an instrument track or an audio track. So what we do is that we want to add an instrument track. Then you can have all of your different plugins that you have here. I have Serum. So right now, FL Studio is linking this playlist pattern here to like you can see here a mixed channel here because this was the previous one this is the new one and it also created a pattern clip right here so this one up here says serum so right now because all of this stuff is linked i can actually go here and change the name so i can call this like uh, lead sound lead sound and put a different color press enter and right now i can also go here and press auto name clips. And what happens is now the pattern is being renamed to lead, lead sound gets the yellow color. And if we go to the mixer channel, it also has the new name and the new color. So this is really handy if you want to start organizing your door and your project, but instead of not having to do all of these manual steps, it's much easier to just have everything linked together. I I'm really annoyed that I didn't learn this when I was starting out because I could save so much time. Get ready for this next step. It's gonna save you so much time. Copy plugins to other mixer channels. Okay, so this one is also like one of those quality of life tips. Let's say that you have one channel where you have like a really cool plugin. Let's say just for this example, this is the Fru Fruity Parametric EQ2. I really like this EQ curve and I want to copy this to the lead sound that we just created. And instead of just having to go to lead sound and load up the, the Fruity EQ like this and having to draw it in, you can instead go to the chords here. I have this one here. 
you can go down and save preset as, but instead of just clicking it, you'll click and drag. So when we click and drag, we can drag it onto the channel with the lead sound. And basically what it's gonna do is that it's just gonna copy this plugin with the different settings to the other channel. So now you just have like the same plugin on the different channel. I think this is really like handy if you don't want to like copy the entire like um, channel rack, the channel strip, if you have like a lot of different plugins down here, but you just want to like copy maybe one or two. This is a really, really cool approach to just do that. And it's gonna save you so much time. So yeah, you definitely need to try, try that out yourself clean up unused audio clips in your track. You might have tried this before, dragging in a lot of different samples, trying out stuff, something might work, and then there are something that doesn't work. And instead of just keeping all of these audio loop, unused audio loops in your project, taking up a lot of space, but also RAM usage, but instead of just trying to navigate through all of the different audio loops, and if you're not so organized, you might not have renamed them and colored them. So you might have like a lot of unorganized audio loops. It can be a little bit tricky to identify what audio loops you're aren't using in the playlist window. But luckily there is a really cool feature in FL Studio where you can clean all of the unused audio loops up in one go. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna navigate up to the top menu up here and press tools. Then we go to macros and then we go to purged unused audio. And when I press this, this button, you might see that all of these like unused audio because I named them so you can see what's happening. These are not being used in the project. So when I press this button here, it's gonna delete them. So let's see. So it definitely, it basically just cleaned everything up. So now I'm just using all of the audio loops that are right here are those that are being used in the playlist window. This is a really cool function to use when you are basically done producing, you have found all of your elements, then you can just tidy everything up a little bit. Your project is not so cluttered with a lot of stuff that you're not using. This is something that's pretty cool. Hey, if you like these tips, why not subscribe to the channel? I'm gonna share some more Eiffel Studio related tips in future videos. Let's jump into the next quality of life tip in FL Studio. Create your own custom starting templates in FL Studio. Do you want to save a lot of time when you're producing music? Why not just use templates when you're starting a project? So you can basically create everything as a template. So we can just save this as a template. Basically where templates are really great is that you can load up some of your like favorite plugins, the plugins that you use almost in all sessions. Okay, so when you think that your template is ready, you need to save this, and then you're gonna locate the folders that I've put down below and just save the template in there. When you have saved the template in the folder, you go up to file and you go to new from template, and then we go down to change default template. Then right down here, you have you can see like my default template right now is the basic 808 with the limiter. You go down here and now you should see the naming of the new template. And this one is test template. So you select that, and now when you start up a new project, it's gonna load up this template that you saved. So it's gonna save you so much time instead of just having to rebuild all of the same actions that you do in all of your like music project sessions, basically. So this one is really cool. Insert space in your playlist window. So let's say that you have built a complete song structure, but now you're, you're just figuring out, okay, that drop could actually be a little bit longer. So instead of having to like highlight everything and try to shift it and move it a little bit away, you can actually do something pretty cool. And that is to insert space. So let's say that you wanna insert this amount of space in the playlist, you select it, and then you go up here to the menu and you press edit. And down here you have the insert space and let's hit that. So right now we added some space, but when you are using audio loops, that could be a little bit of a problem. So let's just press control set to undo. So instead of using the insert space function, we use the slice and insert space. So what this basically does is that it just slices the audio and do like this. So right now we actually have like an empty pocket where we can add a little bit more content for our uh, longer drop basically. So I think this is like a really, really cool like feature that I recently just discovered and I spent so much time like moving all of the stuff manually and also with the automation clips and all that stuff. So yeah, it was a little bit of a hassle. So this one is quality of life. I promise you that. 
consolidate and export different tracks in a flash. So right here, I have some piano chords. And they're coming from the Piano 5 from Arturia. But let's say that I want to save some CPU because adding a lot of these plugins can be a little bit heavy on the CPU. So you can actually go and export this to audio and free up some CPU. So basically what we can do is that we can highlight the area where we want to export it to audio. Then we go to the playlist like menu pattern here and we go down, right click and then we go down and press consolidate track. And now we have some different options that you can go and select from song start, or you can select the time selection. And I basically use the time selection most of the times. So we press time selection, and then it brings up a menu. And here you have some exporting options as you have when you are exporting, like let's say a final track. But there is one really cool thing that you can use here for the exporting option here is that let's say that I have routed this piano VST in my mixer track, and I still want to do that, but I don't want to have all of these different plugins that I have put on the mixer track to be added to the export. So basically you can go down here and you can either enable what's called insert effects or disable them. Right now they are disabled the same with the master effect. So let's say that you you are maybe having like a limiter, a compressor on the master as well. If you have this enabled and you export it and put it into the project again, then it's going to get the same mastering effects twice. And that's maybe not what you're after. So when I'm doing like this consolidate track function, I usually have enable insert effects off and enable master effects off. So let's do that. So right now we have the piano as an audio file. One cool, like really small feature that FL Studio actually does is that it just puts the, the pattern underneath the audio with the, the pattern being disabled. That's why it's grayed out. So let's say that if you wanted to go back and redo something to the MIDI, you can do that or change the sound. So it just doesn't like delete everything. So that, I think that's pretty cool. Okay, I hope you're still having fun, but this next tip is so cool if you're into creative sound design. So check this one out. Use the built-in effect in the Fruity Sampler for some really creative results. Okay, so you might know that FL Studio has this really cool sampler that you can use for one shots and all that stuff. But what I didn't know and didn't utilize enough was all of the built-in effects that we have in the sampler. So let's say like now I just lo loaded up this perk hit here. Let's just go and turn up the volume. So we get a little bit of a louder sound. And then we can go back and actually try to use some of these pre-computed effects. So we just press this one here. So it has like a clipper and a booster. So we can get something like really really squashed. Then it has like an EQ where we can either make it like boost the low end and uh, like the high end to do like some kind of cuts. It also has like this ring modulator thing where you can actually do some really pretty cool stuff, especially so like drum perks and stuff. And it also has like the stereo delay and some reverb as well. Like it has so much stuff. So these functions are actually some of them. There are actually more. So you can go here to the wrench. And now we have some more stuff. We actually have some echo delay stuff here. Where we can add some echoes. A time signature here. Put it to ping pong mode. You can actually also pitch up the, like the delay. Pitch it down. It also has like an arpeggiator where you can just and you can do some some really weird stuff like you can get some creative results like just try this out like play around with all of these different features in the like the sampler it has so much power and for me i just love to use like these pre-computed effects for the drum hits to really change them so instead of using like you could like drag in a splice sample that's maybe a little bit um, overused, but if you drag it into the sampler and just go nuts with all of these built-in effects, you can actually transform it into something that's pretty unique. So yeah, I think you should definitely go and try this out for your sounds.
Okay, so the next one is randomizing the velocity and panning levels in the piano roll. So if you're like me and really wants to add some movement and dynamic changes in your music, you can do this by playing around with velocity levels, panning levels, and a lot of other stuff. But sometimes getting like random results is something like that you have to go in and just do some manual like different values of let's say the velocity of the notes in here in the piano roll but you actually don't have to do like this manual drawing there is one feature in fl studio where you can actually make fl studio do the hard work for you so you can go and select the notes then you can go up to the tools and then we have this one called randomize there is also a short code called alt and r and then you get up this randomizer. If you haven't used this before, then the pattern mode might be enabled. I don't want to use that for this like feature. I'm gonna turn it off, but this is basically to create some random patterns, basically. It's also great if you want to get some melodic ideas, basically. We're gonna turn this off for this video, but we are concerned about the levels down here. So what you might see here is that you can change the amount of panning that's being like applied. So right now you can see in the bottom down here, it's changing the panning values. So let me see if I can play something. So you might hear like right now it's panning and we can also play around with the velocity. So you see like these are also changing the values. And then you can press this seed like option right from left to right to change the different like, I think it's the randomization patterns. So you can see it's changing down here. So just flick through these until you find something that's pretty cool and turn up like up or down these panning and velocity levels. And right now we have like a hi-hat loop that's actually moving in volume and also like in the stereo field from left to right. And I think this is pretty cool. And when I learned about this, I, I just do it for all of my drums almost basically. And it just adds so much life and character. To be honest, I think this is one of my favorite features in Level Studio. Oh, and I really want to hear what your favorite FL Studio feature tips and trick are. Please let me know in the comments down below because I'm always up for learning some new cool tips, tricks and techniques in FL Studio. So just drop them down in the comment fields down below. Okay, let's jump on to the next tip. This is how you easily strum the notes in the piano roll. Okay, so we have another piano roll tip. Let's say that now I have this piano that I showed before. But I want these like chords to strum a little bit, basically just moving all of these notes a little bit to the right. So one way that you can do this is just highlight everything and then you can press Alt and S to enable the piano strummer, strummerizer. You can also go up to the tools and use the strum. So basically there are some different like knobs that you can turn. You have some with the velocity changes. You also have some tension. I think this is like the amount that is being applied and you have the time. So that's basically like how much you want to strum it. We can like try to do this. So this is extreme. You can see like this is a really creative way to get some cool stuff to your sounds. You also have like this end one to determine like how long the end notes are. So I think like something like this could be nice. The, the chords are getting a little bit more like softened and it just has like more like a organic vibe in my opinion. So if you are using pianos, pads, a lot of like these kind of midis that needs a little bit of life, try to use the strumizer. This was just done with like a few clicks and tweaks and then I have something that's pretty cool. So try this out as well. Did you know that you can add a blur effect to your audio in FL Studio almost the same way as you add a blur effect in Photoshop? We have this piano loop that we exported to audio. And now I want to add that blur effect to this audio. So what we're going to do is that we're going to right click on the sample waveform down here. And then we're going to click edit in audio editor. So we open up Edison and in Edison, you can actually do a lot of stuff, but right now we're just gonna focus on the blur effect. So we go to the drop, rain drop here icon, and then you have the blur here. And you can do a lot of tweaks. 
I basically just have the standard one and then I put up the amount to how much I want like to add the blur effect. So let's put it to around here. We press accept and now you have this. That's pretty cool. Let's just drag this like into the same blur, into the playlist, sorry. And now you have like together with the initial chords and then this blur it out. Now you can actually have, like layer your pianos with like this blurred effect. And I think it's a really great way to add some soundscape to your tracks. You can also use the blur effects on vocals and like basically all the stuff that you want or add it to. This is basically pretty cool. And I think you should try it out on a different bunch of sound. Okay, so we are really close at the last couple of tips and tricks in FL Studio. If you're not already a subscriber to the channel, it would mean so much to me if you will hit that subscribe button. It's right down there. Thank you. Okay, let's jump into the last couple of tips and tricks. Bulk edit selected audio clips and patterns in FL Studio. Okay, if you like to have everything a little bit organized, color code and all that stuff, this is a really nifty feature to bulk edit your stuff. So basically what you're going to do is that you're going to go to all of your like sound sources. You can select by pressing and holding down here all the different like channels and audio and instruments. And then you can also like hit shift, hold that down and also select like all of this stuff. We can actually do some like bulk editing to all of this in one go. So let's say I want to like give this like some color. You can go up here to the channel option and then we can actually color the selected and let's just make like a grain gradient style. So the first one is going to be green one and then the last one, a blue one and then press press accept. So right now all of this stuff is color coded. So right now all of this is already highlighted. We can go again to the channel option and then we can actually go down and assign these to free mix tracks. So right now, boom, in one hit, one go, everything is just being routed to the mixer track. This is so cool. This is how you export stems in FL Studio. Okay, let's say that now we have everything, like this is our final song and we want to export all the individual elements. So what I like to do is that I want to route everything to my mixer track, the way that I want them to be set up. And when I've done that, I'm gonna go to file and then I'm gonna go to export and select WAV file. Then I make a folder called stems and then I name the file name stems and press save. And then you get this menu up here. So you can see like the name is stems. But what we want to do right now is that we're going to go down to this function down here called split by mixer tracks. And basically what this does is that now it's going to split everything up in the different mixer channels that you have. So you will get one audio file for your kick drum, one audio file for your claps, hi-hats and so on. And then you have some more options that you can choose. You can either choose to enable the insert effects, like the effects that you have on the individual channels. I usually want to do that, but then you can actually think about if you want to enable the master effect. So let's say that you want to, you have like a limiter and all that stuff on your master, but you want to send these stems off to let's say a mixing engineer or like a stem master engineer, you might not want to have your master effects on. So you can just turn this off. And then when you're ready, you can just hit start and then it's going to export all of the different stems. I'm just going to fast forward this video so you don't have to look at this progress bar. <laughs> but while we're waiting, you could go and subscribe to the channel down below. <laughs> no pressure. So right now I got like my custom folder up here called stems. Here are all of the different stems from my project. Pretty cool. This is how you effectively export all of your project files in one zip file. Okay, let's say that you want to send this project to a collaborator, for example. You want to include all of the different elements, the audio, all of the settings, the presets, and so on. Because if you don't include them, then when you're sending this off to the collaborator, he or she might not be able to open them if they don't have this exact samples as you, as you have. So one really cool way of doing this is that you go up to files and you go to export. And then down here, you have this one called zipped loop packages. 
you select this and then you go and find a place where you want to save your project and you hit save. And now FL Studio just did some magic in the background. But if I just pull up my folder, I saved like a zip loop package right here. And now we can open up the folder. And now you see like I have all of my different audio clips that I have been using and my FL Studio project file. So this is pretty easy. You just go and hit that zip loop package, export it to a, like a zip file. And then you can just send it off to your collaborators and so on. Okay, so it has been so much fun to do this kind of video, but we are at the last tip in FL Studio. So this is not just not one tip, but it's actually something that I encourage you to put into your workflow when you're working in FL Studio. So check this one out. So organizing in FL Studio, this is pretty important. I didn't do this when I was beginning and it was a hassle to navigate through everything because it doesn't have like the proper naming and all that stuff. So I really encourage you to go and use some naming, use colors if that helps you. So like for example, down here, this is not a great name for me because I don't like actually understand what it is. So I will just go and rename this to like a drum top loop number one because I have two, this one as well, top loop number two. And then you can actually go here to the track six over here, right click it and press auto name. So that basically means that it's going to be auto named according to what's in the playlist view. So you have like a drum loop here. So it's just going to add that name to the track. So right now we have like drum top loop two. We do the same thing for track seven, auto name this one. And basically you can also do this if you, if you name your track, let's say here, this is like a texture loop. And I want this to be maybe let's say purple. And then I can go here and say auto name clips. So now all of my clips in this like view, like this playlist channel here, this playlist track is gonna be purple and renamed. So I'm not gonna do this for like everything in this video, but I just want to encourage you to do this while you're producing. Add a name, add a color, and try to organize them in the playlist view because it's going to be much more efficient for you when you're producing. I know like a lot of you don't want to spend time on organizing, but it's going to help you. Also, when you're going to, going to revisit old projects, let's say that you have worked on a lot of different track ideas and you just store this, these like projects on your hard drive and then eventually you actually want to finish them, you go back to them. And if you haven't used like proper naming, proper organization, you might spend a lot of time figuring out what kind of tracks like plays what and does what in the, in the project. So I know this is like a little bit of a hassle in the beginning, but trust me, when you have worked this into your workflow, it just makes much more sense. Right now, I'm always naming my stuff. I'm always color coding everything. And when I like have a finished project, a finished like structure, it's just much easier to navigate through. So I really encourage you to incorporate this tip into a workflow. So it's actually not like a tip. It's just like it's a workflow. So definitely try to organize your stuff a little bit more. Okay, guys, that's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, it means so much to me if you smash that like button or even subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss any future videos on the channel. I have also launched a Discord server for producers. It's a place where we can share our track ideas get feedback, provide feedback. It's generally just a cool place to hang out and talk about music and stuff. And I really want you to get involved if you want to. You can join the Discord via the link in the description down below. If you want to support this channel even further, you can go and browse some of my sample packs and preset packs on my web shop. The link is also in the description down below. So I hope to see you in the next video. Take care, peace.